I just was looking at uh, Russian ports today, and I saw that St. Petersburg, uh, since the war started, is actually doing about 10% of the volume that they were doing last year. Um, I know that the Russians are producing about 3% of the automobiles this year that they were producing last year. Uh, this is an economy that is going to be cut off from the West the way Iran has, as Kevin said. That's not a 5% contraction. That's a 40, 50% contraction over the next, say, five years. I, I don't see anything good coming of that. We have never decoupled a G20 economy from the West before. We're, we're doing it now. And it's Putin's fault, but we're doing it now. So, I mean, as much as I see a near-term likelihood of some level of stabilization, I fear that the medium term is incredibly dangerous. And this is where we're going to need to work with the Chinese and the Indians and the Turks and the Kazakhs and others that actually do still have direct engagement with Putin to see if there is a way to prevent them for massively escalating what is otherwise a downward spiral. Because if you think about what Iran means for the Middle East, they're a rogue state with ballistic missile attacks, drone strikes, espionage, proxy wars, radicalism, terrorist violence, you name it. Well, if Russia is that for NATO with 6,000 nuclear warheads, that really does not bode well for the next five, 10 years or for our kids, it really doesn't. And so I, I think, yes, there is a real possibility of a Cuban Missile Crisis in the next eight weeks. I think it's 5%. The White House thinks it's more like 20%. Either way, those numbers are way too freaking high. But I also think there is this one, two, three, five year danger that is massive and certainly is unprecedented post the wall coming down in 89. And we don't yet know how to manage that. While we're trying to manage down the Cuban Missile Crisis risk with a lot of effort for the near term. The medium term, I don't see anyone yet doing anything on the medium term.